Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is August 14, 2021, and this weekend we are hanging with the Sock Dem Gang. This is when we watch clips from social democratic channels and comment and criticize them uh, from a Marxist perspective. My basic methodology is I go to the Secular Talk channel run by Kyle Kalinske, then I click on the other featured channels tab that you're seeing on your screen, and I go and I look for any interesting videos from the last week or so that uh, might merit some comment. And, you know, also I can get caught up on current events by doing this, although I usually don't agree with their takes. And that's where the commentary and criticism comes in. So this week I am doing a new one. This is a response to an amazing atheist video. Now, my recollection is this guy was like one of the earliest YouTubers and I haven't really watched much from him, uh, so this is really cold. I don't even have much of an impression other than I think I watched one of his videos like 10 years ago. Really didn't like it and turned it off before it was over. But uh, that was a long time ago. Anyway, this is a video by Amazing Atheist called Abolish All Borders, parentheses, and Live in Peace, end parentheses. So, sounds to me like more of an anarchist sentiment, but you know, nowadays these rad libs, they're pulling from all over and uh, mixing in anarchist thought and Scandinavia and whatnot. So, let's see what this is all about. Uh, okay, so I'll interject. That's a really disturbing start to your video. Um, all I really know about this guy's channel is the name, Amazing Atheist. Um, Almost looks like you're giving atheism a bad name by associating it with pessimism. There are plenty of atheists who, you know, have a rational, uh, non-religious worldview and um, who aren't misanthropes and cynics. So anyway, um, that's horrifically disturbing. Yeah. OK, moving on. Let's have a nuanced discussion about borders. Abolish them. Wait, that's not really, it's not really all that nuanced, is it? <laughs> um, abolish them over the course of several days. All right, so I already have a strong feeling I'm not going to like this much. Um, but I noticed something flashed on the screen, so I wanted to just go back to that for a second and actually look at it. So, you know, it, there's a little joke there. It says day one, convert all food to soy. Day two, force feminize all Republicans. Day three, install socialism. Day four, make Bernie president for life. Day five, destroy government. Day six, I'll make all years 1984. Day seven, destroy borders. Um, I mean, from the note that we've launched this video on, I'm kind of not sure whether it's satire or whether, you know, satire has merged with uh, really bad political positions at this point. You know, the way that things go in the U.S., who even knows? Uh, but uh, anyway, I, it's, you know, this is trivial, but it's, and it's kind of just personal taste. It seems just kind of stupid so far, but all right. Now that we've read that, let's move on. There we go. I know not many people agree with me on this because they're simps to whatever flag they were born under, but... I've had enough of these arbitrary lines that we drew on a map that tell us where we can and can't go. Hey, you need special documents to walk over there. That's Mexico. Nope, that's Earth. Okay, so, so far, there's not much to work with here, and I hope that the intellectual level of this video picks up at some point. If not, at least it's a fairly short video. But uh, yeah, this is a very basic thought uh, that probably every, you know, seven or eight year old looking at a map has had. Uh, what are all those lines on the map? Uh, aren't they arbitrary? Whatever. You know, seven or eight year old may not know the word arbitrary, but, you know, you get the idea. Where did the lines come from? Did people just draw them? Whatever. Well, you know, we, quote unquote, didn't just draw those lines. Uh, the rulers of societies in different ages uh, drew those borders. Borders obviously predate capitalism. Uh, borders are claims to land that, uh, you know, any governing order says our law applies, you know, from this space to this space and et cetera. This is, this is really elementary thought. 
Um, we didn't, you know, we as in the average person did not really draw those borders. Uh, they arose out of complex, you know, sometimes very long standing uh, agreements between people and whatever. Um, you know, sometimes borders can be very unjust and drawn up by conquering powers that uh, really have no interest in what the people who live in an area want. Um, you know, and land just gets repartitioned sometimes uh, all, you know, very arbitrarily or with the explicit purpose of dividing up a people so that they can't resist a colonizing power or invading power, etc. Uh, borders do change often over time. I mean, really often over time. And, um, you know, they have been a practical way of organizing terrain. And uh, I guess to say otherwise is... A little bit silly. I mean, even nomadic people uh, have some kind of sense of where they go and where they generally don't go. But um, anyway, this guy is reducing everything to, well, it's Earth. Okay, well, great. Um, within the framework you're putting out, can we have any kind of a society where some sort of predictable uh, life where you can make plans from day to day with some kind of a standard of living, is that supportable? And if not, I don't want to have this conversation. Uh, we're trying to move, we as Marxists, that is, are trying to move beyond capitalism into something that is a higher level of order, uh, more just, more democratic, fairer, uh, where the majority of people, their class interests are represented, and the working class is in power, and we suppress uh, people who exploit us for our labor until we completely eradicate uh, the existence of their class, and so on. But um, simply eradicating all borders at the outset and then not replacing them with anything, uh, well, you're, all you're really doing in a situation like that, the bourgeoisie, the world capitalist class, has a tremendous amount of resources at their disposal. Uh, they will just redraw those borders. So you need to actually challenge their order with a new order that we have to build uh, rather than merely erasing which first of all they're not going to let you do uh, peacefully so anyway all this is i think fairly juvenile let's continue though whenever i shit talk borders i get uh, opposed from a few different angles some border defenders say that getting rid of borders is impossible or at the very least impractical well actually they're far easier to get rid of than they are to maintain you simply stop enforcing them Pretty f***ing easy. The next group of border cucks are those who are afraid of the word globalism. Oh! They don't know what globalism is. They don't know why it's bad, but they're scared that if we ever get rid of the borders, globalism might get them. The opposite of globalism is nationalism. Nationalism has a proven track record of being dog shit. So if you want to be scared of a word, be scared of that one. The next group of imaginary line defenders are those who put forth the argument, well, if you don't believe in borders, <laughs> then obviously I should be allowed to just walk right into your house. Oh, you got me there. Well, since you have such a fucking affinity for imaginary lines that tell you where you can and can't go, you can go live in a fucking hopscotch square. All safe and snug, okay. Don't step out of it though, cause if you do, some goons might cave your skull in. My point is this. Okay, uh, before we get to whatever his point is, uh, I want to apologize basically for putting this on my channel. Imagine being Kyle Kalinske and linking to this guy. I mean, I know they have the secular, like, atheist connection, but my god. <laughs> what were you thinking? Uh, this video is unwatchable on every level. <laughs> Visually, uh, the shrill audio, the um, just absolutely terrible points he's making. I, I don't know who this video is aimed at. Uh, who would watch this at, at all, seriously? Um, anyway, I, I don't fall into any of those groups of, you know, imaginary line defenders or uh, border cucks. Um... Yeah, so, anyway, I think uh, you have a kind of a lunatic ranting here. Uh, this, is, this is a very poor presentation. Anyway, 
I can't say that there's too much to add here beyond what he's already said. There's, there's, there's no analysis. So what I said before stands. Uh, socialists were trying to seek a higher level of order uh, than capitalism that's more just, more democratic. And um, to the extent that we continue to have borders between different territories for one reason or another, uh, that those can reflect, uh, you know, the, the wishes of the people who live in those areas and that um, they will not be used to uh, enforce any kind of uh, inequality or to, you know, uh, make people living in an area more ripe for a particular kind of oppression. You know, we want freedom of travel. We want a dignified life for people. Um, to the extent that borders facilitate that, uh, then they're useful. To the extent that, you know, they don't, uh, then, you know, what he said, you can stop enforcing them or you can enforce them more loosely or whatever. But I think that trying to have this discussion, and there's still a couple of minutes left, but trying to have this discussion absent a discussion of class struggle is absurd because... You know, we live in a deeply divided world, which is torn by imperialism uh, from many different angles. And people try to protect themselves from imperialism. So there are just many, many layers here. I, I don't want to do all this guy's work for him. Uh, and we may be doing some uh, audiobooks on the channel on this upcoming week on related subjects. But... Um, yeah, I, I wish this guy was saying more so that I had more to say back. But uh, I guess, you know, my overarching comment is um, these are puerile assertions he's making, and there's just not much to work with. Let's continue. The position can be taken too far in either direction. We're not talking about the elimination of personal space. We're talking about the elimination of nations and national sovereignty. So please try to keep up. Another group of state violence enforced arbitrary no-go zones are those who fear the dilution of their culture if we get rid of the pretend lines. So two points on this. One, if your culture is so weak that it crumbles, the very second outside perspectives are introduced, then guess what? It was a garbage culture that deserved to die. Second, think for yourself, you drone. I hate to fall back on one of the oldest edgelord cliches there is, but you leave me no choice. Wake up, sheeple. Hmm. You know, I thought I, I thought I was gonna feel kind of cringy saying that, but my dick actually got kind of hard. I guess the classics never do go out of style, do they? Okay, this is abysmal. Um, I, what kind of dirt does this guy have on Kyle Kalinske that he keeps linking to this? Because this is, I mean, this is through the floor. Terrible. Um, in just every way. So I guess the only thing that really stands out to me about what he said is, um, okay, so you're going to abolish all borders. What, what happens then? Have you thought it through at all? Or is just this an idea you like? Because look, for example, at what the U.S. does today. The U.S. today is partly living your dream. It doesn't respect the national borders of the many countries it has invaded in the last few decades. So there's an example in action. Uh, what's wrong with that? By this logic, nothing, because, you know, the U.S. had the ability to go into a particular area. Uh, therefore, it did so. So... Um, you know, is there an aspect here, possibly, of people wanting their territory in which they make their living and produce, you know, do all their activities, do their industrial activity, do their agricultural activity, all of that, uh, you know, sleep at night, so on and so forth. You know, having like some amount of guarantee or agreement that, uh, you know, they can do so, and these are the rules, and X, Y, Z, and so on. I don't hear much discussion of what society looks like after you have eliminated all the borders, particularly, like I said before, taking into account uh, bad actors who don't even respect the borders that we do have. So I think that that would be important, and there's like less than a minute left of this video. I guess, you know, we've come a long way from the early days of YouTube, if this is what it was like. Um, all right, continuing. 
Well, that's the thing, really. If something old is good, it'll stick around. If something old is cringe, it doesn't deserve to be preserved just because it's your culture. So the final group I want to talk about are the racists. The people who they really don't care about. Okay, wait. So before we get into the racists, first of all, I mean, by this logic, if something's, you know, old and good, it sticks around. I mean, borders are pretty old. Uh, so... I'm not saying that they're good, uh, you know, or just like as some blanket statement, like I love borders, you know, they complete me. That's really not, I don't even know really how to engage with this guy. It's like, this video kind of reminds me of that meme that had like a meth pipe and it's like moments before this post was made. It's like moments before this video was made. This is pretty ragged. Anyway, um, but this other notion, and I kind of addressed it, but I want to address it a little bit more head on that your culture deserves to die if it's so weak or whatever. Well, uh, I think that that is a, a counterattack against the right wing in the U S who say things like, you know, Oh, uh, you know, migrating South Americans are invading the U S which is clearly a bullshit framing. And, uh, you know, they're going to destroy, you know, U S white culture or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't agree with that sentiment, but think again about, well, you know, he said that's Earth. So I'm guessing he's for if this guy could push a button, all borders would be erased everywhere. But as I discussed before, the problem is that then people with more power will just uh, say, well, there's, you know, no more borders. And then the whole world uh, just becomes a war unless you have, you know, set up something to the contrary that can push back on imperialist logic that is just going to try to go out and conquer everything as rapidly as it can, which it does anyway, even with borders in place. So what are you going to, you know, how are you going to address that? So, I mean, again, I think I'm asking too much of <laughs> this guy who is, you know, clearly not uh, the best videographer, but Anyway, I give up. Let's just finish the video. Culture as much as they care about color. They hear abolish borders and they think, oh no, more brown people. I don't like that color of people. Here's the thing. If there are no borders, all of you racists can pick a random spot on the earth and conglomerate there together in a big white mass. Kind of like a zit, only more disgusting. Sure, you can't enforce its borders, but who really is going to want to come around you? I have a final thought I want to leave you with, but first, I want to ask that you uh, please check out my podcast, Deep Fat Fried. We air episodes every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We also have a live news show every Wednesday called Flash Fried. Link is below. All right, so here's my final thought. Humanity once existed in small tribes of hunter-gatherers. For most of human history, that's what we were. Then, some clever humans invented farming and we started to establish permanent villages. From there, we went from cities to city-states, to empires, to nation-states, to where we are now, nation-states that exist as part of a global economy. Our economies are interconnected, and thanks to the internet, our people are growing more connected. Yet there are still lines that separate us. I say, one planet, one people, tear down the walls, let's start identifying as Earthlings. And when the alien mothership lands and says, take me to your leader, we can reply, we don't have one. Thanks for watching. Please rate, please comment, please subscribe, all that good stuff. Remember, if you like my more informal streaming type of content, be sure to check out my streaming channel, TJ Does Life. That's also linked below. And remember, always remember, I love you all. Peace. Okay, I mean, that was a nice little uh, ending note. Otherwise, that was a terrible, poorly thought out, poorly presented video that just made very little sense. I did appreciate the sort of moment of clarity uh, at the end there, talking about, you know, the progression of society uh, through different ages from hunter-gatherer or primitive communism up to today. Uh, but if you tried to make any sense of what he said in terms of applying it to reality you would have uh, some real deficits there and you would have to do a lot of legwork of going, well, how would we do that? Also, interesting that the tearing down of the Berlin Wall was, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. You know, that was one of the examples that he used. Um, garbage. I don't, I don't know what else to say.
maybe you, you all can help me out in the comments section. Uh, I'm just uh, speechless, really. That was a that was a terrible video. So if you made it through that, I, I don't know that we're gonna do any more replies to that channel. That was awful. Uh, if you did make it, thanks for watching. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month. If uh, that's not your thing right now, it is a terrible economy, so I completely understand. You can just like, share, subscribe, and comment if you'd like to help out. You can spread our videos around the internet, particularly on Facebook, where we have no presence currently. Uh, that would be helpful, too. We're also on Twitter at SocialismS4A, and you can follow us there. Uh, wow. It's going to take a while to get that one out of my head. But hey, let's move on to the next Hanging with the Sockdown video, and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.